Hello, Shaheen. Hello. Hello, Vijaba. Hello. Welcome. Uh, Welcome to the webinar, and I will leave the floor to you now for yes. the talk. Yes, uh, hello to everyone. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me at this moment. So, uh, my name is Shahin Edin and Vila uh, introduced me to you. I will talk about gender equity in science education today to you. Uh, what does it mean, gender equity? Um, it's important or not for science teachers and other uh, teachers I will talk about to you. And firstly, uh, I want to start with the concept of gender equity. Uh, for this reason, what does it mean, gender equity? So, many researchers have sought to identify and differentiate the meanings of sex and genders in order to understand the impact of biology and other factors on human behavior. So, this is exemplified by two attempts at definition below. And um, World Health Organization points out with their study in 2009, the term sex refers to the biological and psychological characteristics that define men and women. The term gender refers to economic, social, political, and cultural attributes and opportunities associated with being male and female. So in most societies, men and women differ in the activities they undertake in access to and control of resources and in participation in decision making. And if most societies, women as a group have less access than men to resources and opportunities and decision making. So this place uh, points out uh, this one. And gender equality. Equality between men and women entails the concept that all human beings both men and women are free to develop their personal abilities and make choices without the limitations set by stereotypes, rigid gender roles, and prejudice. So, uh, dear participants, uh, it's very important that the concept of that we, we talk about its stereotypes in the scope of the science education, in the scope of gender equity, and gender equity means fairness of treatment for women and men according to their respective needs. This may include equal treatment or treatment that is different, but which is considered equivalent in terms of rights, benefits, and obligations and opportunities. And UNESCO points out this in 2000. So also, it's very important that uh, rights, uh, benefits, and obligations and opportunities, equality between women and men, so you see a picture, it's written in here, I stereotypes keeping women away from signs. A woman is in the picture and she is doing an experience in the scope of science education, in the scope of science course, and she has a stereotype and she is asking to all of us that women can, can do science or not. So uh, we will talk about gender equity in the scope of education. There are two, there are three features. A third perspective on gender equality emphasizes three main pillars, and both and Bennett points out this one. The first is equal treatment, and the second is position action, and uh, third one is gender mainstreaming. Also, European Commission points out this, the third features about gender equality, and Within the, the strategy of gender mainstream, uh, mainstreaming is strongly promoted by the European Union. It's interpreted by the EU as ranging from reforming distractions from efforts to promote equality to the implementation of specific measures to help women and also and men. So it includes mobilizing all general policies and measures specifically for the purpose of achieving equality by actively and openly taking into account at the planning stage the possible effects on the respective situation of man and woman. Gender perspective is called. So what does it mean to European Commission? 
This may systematically examining measures and policies and taking into account such possible effects when defining and implementing them. And this statement is very important to be formal. So the goals to be achieved through gender mainstreaming in education include gender equity in enrollment and completion rates and structural equality within the teaching profession and the addressing of gender stereotypes in school curricula and teacher education. And the main is points out this one. Also, we will argue uh, school curricula and teacher education. In some slides, we will see them. And the final final statement about gender equity, the primary goal of gender equity policies in education is to challenge traditional gender roles and stereotypes. These two concepts are very important for us to understand what does it mean gender equity. And you see a picture and in the picture we see a balance and one of them is men and the other one is the woman and they are balanced on the balance to be opportunities, to be benefits, to other things in the scope of gender equity without the stereotypes. So we can talk about like this. So uh, we have some themas in theory science educational practice in the scope of uh, gender equity. Uh, we have nine te themas. Uh, the first one is the curriculum, official and hidden curriculum. Second one is school reading materials. Third one is subject preference and choice. And the fourth, motivational and psychological issues. And the fifth, school enrollment. And the other, teacher attitude and seventh, assessment, and co-education and single-sex settings. And the last one is the problem of boys. We will talk about these nine features in the scope of science, uh, gender equity in science education. So we are going to start with first features, first themas. It's called the curriculum. We have two curriculum in science education. The first is formal curriculum, the official curriculum concerns the subjects that are taught in schools and their content. It varies from country to country and in many there is a national country. Uh, although as a curriculum terrorist uh, teacher points out in his study in 2000, though official curricular attempt rarely addresses gender equality with some exceptions such as Sweden and South Africa they tend to apply certain gender assumptions, for example, that power subjects, science and mathematics and technology will attract males and others, for example, language and literature, also families. So this means that the content of different subjects attracts boys and girls on the basis that this is what proper girls or boys do. And this statement is very important to understand this one. Also, the hidden curriculum, on the other hand, concerns everything that happens in our schools that is not official. For example, social relations in the classroom or playground, in friendships, relationships between teachers and pupils, and relationships between pupils and pupils, and levels of bullying and harassment and so on. So the hidden curriculum transmits to children a collection of messages which is which often uh, reinforce sex stereotyping, thus sustaining a sexual division of labor in the social process of schooling. And Hohn points out this uh, in his study in, in 1989. And second, second tema is reading materials in science courses. In these features, we have some concepts. Uh, firstly, I want to uh, tell about used language. Why use language is important in our science classes? So, because the gender nature of reading material and other school texts provide important indicators of the extent of gender stereotype in the education system as a whole. For example, I want you to give an example uh, from Turkey. Before uh, 2005, in my country, in Turkey, in the scope of science textbooks, it was written bilim adamı, and bilim adamı means that man of science. After 2005, in science textbooks, it was started written scientist. So scientist is the right one. Before this statement, uh, many of our 
your students thought about scientists that just men can do science, not girl. And after 2005, we, we arranged this mistake as rightly. So, the language used is highly influential, particularly on young children, and has drawn criticism in the past for excluding or demeaning girls and women and for favoring stereotyped gender roles. Firemen instead of firefly fighters, boys who laugh as opposed to girls who giggle are two examples. I want you to focus on these examples. For example, the first one says fireman. This is a mistake. It's the right with a firefighter. And the other one, and giggle and laugh. We are, as a teacher, as a science teacher, should watch out our use language in science courses. And pictures, uh, the pictures which are used in science textbooks are very important in the scope of gender equity or gender inequity. Uh, I want you to give an example with a, a recent police study suggests that textbooks used by older students are even more sexist than texts for younger children, not, on, not only concerning illustration but the language used. Also, the other one, a Spanish study of gender stereotypes in images present in school language and literature textbooks showed similar quantitative and qualitative biases. Regarding quantitative biases, women's picture representation in these materials was roughly half of men's. Also, it's about 31% of the total, and Luengo and Velasco points out this one in their uh, study. Uh, I suggest uh, all the participants about the pictures are used in science textbooks in your country, in your national textbooks. Can you please look at, after this webinar, to your science textbooks in the scope of used pictures? And I want you to compare for boys and for girls in the scope of the persons used pictures. And subject preference and choice. An early concern of feminists was the different subject and the career pathways that girls and boys take. A national curriculum which allows little subject choice tends to reduce the gender gap in subject choice and attainment as was seen in the United Kingdom following in the introduction of a national curriculum. In 1988, Arnold uh, had pointed out this. However, while the choice is allowed, boys generally choose male identified subjects and carrier pathways and girls female identified subjects and carrier pathways. Uh, I also agree with this statement and, and this one uh, pointed out in the United Kingdom study. Also in my country, unfortunately, we have this one. Uh, in latest European Union report for science education, the same statements uh, in European country uh, have this one. So school level destination statistics in Europe show that many young people still option for gender stereotype career choices and it has been argued therefore that careers advisors need to be more gender aware and thus more able to challenge stereotype assumptions, students, schools, cultures and deployers. Uh, before, before, uh, before passing the fourth themas, the third, the third papers is very important because uh, in the scope of STEAM education, STEAM education is very important for us for fixing the job for girls and for boys. So. Um, we are, as a teacher, as a science teacher, uh, can watch out these, these jobs in the scope of the science education. And the fourth, motivation and psychological issues. How students feel about themselves as being perceived as crucial to their school performance. Thus, studies of gender difference in student self-concept 
have been of much interest. However, research evidence is inclusive with findings ranging from little evidence of difference to males having far higher self image. Also, a student's motivation to do well at school is also an important factor. And uh, one of the greats this uh, point out in, in his study in 2006. So, the fifth theme is the school environment. The other one is important for us. Evidence has emerged that students' achievement levels are much influenced by the school environment and, in particular, the daily management and organizational procedures of schools which are frequently relying on gender as a management tool. Also, as we are teachers and the other branch teachers and school management should should be careful about this uh, environment uh, features. So girls and boys may be separated for classroom re registers, classroom activities, and team sports. For example, dress codes may differ for boys and girls, and trousers for boys and skirts for girls, and also for members of staff. Scott points out this one in his study in 2007. I don't know if it's right or wrong. Uh, it's debating in the scope of the national uh, cultures, uh, but he he pointed out this one in his study. Such practices are criticized because they have little educational benefit, save as deliberate micro gender differences. On the other hand, investment of time in the development of institutional policies and associated staff development and seed points of this one, which address, for example, bullying and sexual harassment have been shown to be effective in raising pupil and staff consequence that such behavior is demanding and unacceptable. unacceptable. So, uh, the sixth our theme is teacher exercise. It's very important in the scope of science education, in the scope of gender equity for science courses, teacher activities. Are we are we are we doing some right doings to our students or not? So even when teachers believe that they treat their students actually, they are more likely to chastise male students and pay them more attention while at the same time creating greater dependency in their female students. So for instance, I want you an example. If a teacher says to her or to her, uh, his pupil, hey Mustafa, so and I am of a Turkish boy, don't babble like with your friend because you are not a girl. I want you to see a big mistake and a big stereotype in this statement. She or he supposes that just boys can babble lynch. So the teacher uses this one. This statement means a big stereotype during science classes. So girls could understand wrongly their teacher and the girls feel themselves as a, a believers. We are teacher, as we are science teacher, have to careful our words to our pupils in the during the science courses. Because our all pupils are very important for us. Thus, teachers' general lack of awareness of how they use gender as an important organizing and categorizing the factor, and their tacit assumptions about gender have together had a profound effect on student behavior. And to so Rofili points out this one uh, in his study in 2002. The seventh feature is assessment. Assessment procedures have frequently been found to be gendered despite claims of neutrality and lack of beyond. So you see the other picture. Uh, in the picture we see two people. One of them says achievement gaps, and the other one says poverty gaps. And they're talking about test scores. And I will talk about your uh, team scores and PISA scores in the scope of gender equity. And are they efficient or not? We will see. So similar criticisms to that of reading materials have been made of examination, papers and assessment texts, key dominance and male of male participants and settings. 
surveillance treatment of women and sexual language and restorations. Additional studies show that girls or women tend to mark it down and and boys marked up where the sex of gender days is done, which has led in some countries to do anonymizing of the name and sex of the students. And Gagart points out, and uh, this one in 1989, and the Wollenkamp points out, uh, and Cole points out this one in 1997 uh, in these studies. So, what can we do as a science teacher in science courses during giving science classing? Solution and suggest. I suggest for solving this problem, teachers should close their pupils writing papers during reading the formal paper. In this way, teachers cannot see which paper she or he, in the scope of their pupils, reads, and there cannot be seen any stereotype because if teacher sees her or his pupils there. Uh, this could be this could be uh, this could be uh, some causative in the scope of some stereotype. And the eighth feature tema is co-education and single sex settings. Co-education accepts the biological difference between men and women, but rejects the assumption of male and female stereotypes, and therefore automatically rejecting the existing hierarchical hierarchical structure which favors men over women and thus enable, enab enabling other barriers of hierarchy to be broken down. Also, uh, Chris also points out uh, this one. Co-education consists of education girls and boys alike in a context hour and above those gender roles which society prescribes for each sex so uh, in many of in many of uh, European countries, uh, we have not single settings, single sex schools. We have mixed type schools, and in some countries, for example, in Turkey or in Ireland, a lot of schools we have uh, as in single sex schools. And the last feature tema is the problem of boys. We are talking about girls, and if we have wrongly advised and uh, doing some things to girls, and during this time, what is the boys' teaching in the scope of gender activity? And we call this one the problem of boys. As we have seen from the late 19 and 70s, on worse gender issues in education were associated principally with a focus on the achievements and aspirations of girls in order, as it was argued, to redress the power imbalance in favor of boys and men. So you see a picture. I hope everyone can see this picture. Man says to her wife, don't you think you exaggerate that gender equality issue, ha? Huh? So in the picture we see a woman that she is shaving. An uh, uh, implied picture you see, and it's very important in the scope of uh, cloth one uh, stereotype. However, because of the increasing emphasis on examination achievement in recent years and the narrowing of the gender gap in the favor of female students, much interest in gender has resulted to concern about the perceived underachievement of males. And OECD points out this one in its study in 2001. So, gender patterns in science achievement. Is it important or not? Gender equality is important or not in the scope of patterns? We have two international examinations in the world and OECD and OECD do this examination. The first examination's name is TIMS, Trans Maths and Science Achievement for Pupils. Uh, TIMS studies is often did for fourth grade students and eighth grade students and we have some findings in the scope of TIMS 
Teams results. In, yes, team studies often find gender gaps in favor of boys, whereas PISA reports generally show no significant gender differences. And the other and the other mm, examination is called a PISA. PISA is did for 15 years old students in on the on the round of the world. But PISA reports generally show no significant gender differences between boys and girls. And teams 2003 revealed that there was no gender gap in the fourth year in most countries. The Flemish community of Belgium, Italy, Latvia, Hungary, Slovenia, the United Kingdom, also we call England and Norway. However, in year eight, boys had significantly higher achievement than girls in the majority of countries. Only in Estonia and Cyprus was there no gender gap in such achievement. Nevertheless, girls showed greater improvement on average than boys, especially from 1999. And Martin points of this one in his study in 2004. And the other results. The teams 2007 again found no, no gender gap in, in the fourth year of schooling in seven European countries. And these countries are Denmark, Latvia, Lithuania, Hungary, Sweden, the United Kingdom, and England and Scotland, and Norway. But reported a lead for boys or girls in six countries, and the Czech Republic, Germany, Italy, uh, Netherlands, Australia, Austria, and the Slovakia. Regarding science achievements of pupils in year eight, there was no gender gap differences in most countries. And these countries are Lithuania, Malta, Slovenia, Sweden, the United Kingdom. As you see, these statements also weaken about the same countries and uh, boys and girls in the scope of teams and PISA results, no gender gap in four years. Girls scored higher in Bulgaria, Cyprus, and Romania, whereas boys performed better in Czech Republic, Italy, and Hungary. And Martin has uh, this result in his study in 2008. Overall, results of such investigations show in general a situation which is far from satisfactory. Boys outperform girls in problem solving, in 23 countries, girls outperform boys in five countries, economies, and in 16 countries, there is no significant differences in average performance between boys and girls. This result is very important for us, and uh, unfortunately, we haven't any much studies why we have this result. Also, I think the researchers should should uh, research this result. So girls appear to be stronger in performing the planning and executing tasks that measure how students use knowledge and compared to other tasks and weaker in the performing the more abstract, representing and formulating tasks which relate to how students achieve knowledge. The statement is taught about achieve knowledge. On average, across OECD countries, OECD is a uh, big organization that is about 100 countries, and OECD has about 100 countries. Uh, they fix it in the scope of economic status. And OECD countries, there are three top performing boys for every two top performing girls in problem solving. In Croatia, Italy, and the Slovak Republic, boys are as likely as girls to be low achievers, but are more than twice as likely to be top performers as girls. Also, in no country or economy are there more girls than boys among the top performers, the problem solving. And we can tell this one from PISA 2012 report. Women and men continue to be treated differently in many school books in European countries and also European and European um, countries. A formal report says this one. Men are still more often represented than women. Vocabulary is in contradiction with the principle of gender equality. The main characters are mostly male, 
women depicted have largely typically female jobs and are generally missing from the political and intellectual arena. So, textbooks show stereotype images of men and women, and the fifth can be said to tackle stereotypes or balance to representation of men and women, as various research projects have shown. So, uh, I can tell you, I, and I could suggest all of you possible measures for tackling gender inequalities in science education. And the first, eliminating six stereotype through revision of school. In the scope of science text, reading and display materials, examination and questions. As we are teachers, when we offer to our pupils about reading and display mater materials, uh, we have to be very, very careful for them. So, if our people has some stereotypes in the scope of genders, uh, it means and uh, it leads us, it leads uh, the teachers to wrong ways, and this means a big stereotype our pupils have can be. So, teacher let work, and third one is switching to mixing sex pairing or single sex grouping where appreciate or offering greater learning support. And the fourth, teachers and school managers also need practical guidance on the legal context for gender equality and how to develop and appreciate school climate as well as information on teaching, subject content, and assessment. It's very important between teachers, between uh, school management and the pupils in the scope of dialogue. And the fifth, the development of school teacher pupil relations is a key factor in generating gender change in schools and, in particular, encouraging teachers to be non discriminatory towards and respectful of their students. So, uh, these five suggests are very important for teachers, for science teachers, to approach style, st strategy to their purpose within the gender equity. Also, uh, I want to tell about you our survey, our research in the scope of the gender equity. Unfortunately, there aren't any a service in the scope of gender equality. This is, I think, the first one directly in the scope of a called science education. We, me and my friend, uh, and his name is Ismail Dömez, as a science, uh, he's a science and technology teacher and also ongoing his PhD in science education. Um, we developed a survey and the survey has 35 matters. All of the matters are in science education, in, within the science education developed. 116 middle school science teachers answered this survey. These answers were examined within the survey. Science teachers' views were investigated and reported. They really wondered what kind of thoughts our science teachers think about gender equity in science education. We wanted to fix this question. So, the survey as a measurement tool has a five point like Likert type, and uh, these are the first strongly angry, agree, and two agree, and third undecided, and the fourth disagree, and the fifth strongly disagree. So, the result of survey I opened for you the result of uh, survey. We'll look at the results in a in a uh, static program. It's called SPSS, Static Packet for Packet uh, Program for Social Studies. It's very uh, famous uh, static program. So uh, our participants, 51 of participants are female science teachers, and 65 of them are male teachers. You see as a table, table one, and the, Second table, you see education study. We have two teachers, science teachers. They come from, they, they have a uh, junior colleague. 
and 82 teachers lessons and 28 teachers have to graduate and four teachers science teachers we have in our survey uh, phd so okay also uh, i think uh, finally uh, we are about uh, lasted. We are about to uh, finish the process about telling. I want you uh, also. We have uh, some matters in the scope of this service. If anyone wants to have these results for their studies, I can share uh, the result of this survey. But if you want to. Uh, ask any question to me, I can answer to you, because uh, I think we have no much time uh, for telling the result of this survey. If any of you have uh, any question, I can answer for you. And I'm waiting for questions, the, the participants, if anyone have any question. Thank you, Shaheen. Um, You're welcome. Yeah, it would be interesting yeah, to share the results of the survey. We if a participant uh, yes. like. And uh, for everybody, if you like to ask Shaheen some more question or you have some other suggestion, uh, write please in the chat. Um, we had a comment already during uh, the talk uh, referring to the fact that some of the recommendations involve uh, most probably changing uh, culture assumption. Would you like Shaheen uh, tell us something more about this? Yes, uh, I have I told uh, everything in the scope of this presentation. Uh, I want the participants, uh, if they have any question or any comments or if, if they have any views, uh, if they want to share uh, and we can talk about and we can debate on their comments. So I am waiting, dear participants, from you some questions some of your views, and what kind of teaching you have in your country in the scope of science education. I want you to share uh, your experience with all of us, if you have or not. Yes. There is another comment uh, in the chat. Yes. Can you see yeah. that? Yes, from Milana to everyone, I think, uh, if you say Milana's comment. In Serbia, uh, Milana says, in Serbia, Ministry of Education and UNICEF delivered set of gender issue workshops for teachers who will afterwards deliver those workshops to pupils. Nice, and um, the results were not revolutionary or even memorable, for, but keep teachers really figure out the problem of gender roles and how much gender boxes influence on students. Uh, really, uh, we haven't any uh, much researches in the scope of science education and in the scope of gender equality. Unfortunately, as we teachers um, have to careful out in the during the science classes, our attitude is to pupils to our pupils, and uh, we look at before science courses to science textbooks in. Uh, what kind of issues during we will uh, talk about to our pupils in some uh, issues. And from Marulis to everyone, I see, uh, University of Davis, Spain, we are celebrating Code Week these days with students of 10 and 14 years old and girls love programming and solving technology related challenges. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Marulis, uh, for this comment. Also, any other comment I'd like to find? Uh, Miriam points out, uh, this is a crucial point, but possibly the most challenging recommendation to achieve as it involves changing cultural assumptions. Yes, it can be said, but uh, we cannot mainly 
talk about this one. Yes, it's important, but uh, really cultural assumptions is important. But I think uh, we can look at and uh, we can look into our science curriculum and our education systems. I think it's uh, it's better it's better important and main and basic. So I'm waiting the other convention. Yeah, Milana says, uh, do you think using positive discrimination can be a solution? Sometimes, uh, sometimes it can be useful, but sometimes it cannot be useful. Uh, you are, as a science teacher, you know your people. It's very important to introduce your students. It's very important. Uh, positive discrimination, sometimes we need this one. Really, we need this. Uh, thank you, Milana, for your comments. And it can be a good solution sometimes during science classes for some pupils also. Any other questions for Shahin? Please feel free to share in the chat. Also, uh, I have been waiting your experience in your country, so what kind of situation you have in your country, and you can also write your country science courses, any problem in the scope of gender equity, and you can share with us, and we can debate with this. We can wait a few minutes more in case it takes some time to write in the chat. And uh, would you like to have anything, Shaheen, or some other remarks? Yes, uh, also, uh, especially uh, during this time, during waiting, uh, participants, uh, comments, and questions, uh, I, want to, I want to share one important, one important result which we have uh, developed in our survey. In our country, in Turkey, in Turkey, we asked to our science teachers the first question: "There is gender equality in our country or not?" We want to fix our science teachers what kind of thoughts they have. So, 40 female teachers are disagree with this statement. They think the female teachers think there isn't any gender equality in our country. And 32 male teachers are disagree also with this statement. Uh, this result is very important for us. And the other question, there is gender equality in science education in our country. The second statement we asked to our science teachers. And 40, uh, oh, sorry, and um, 2040 female teachers are agree with this statement too, and 35 male teachers are disagree with this one. And also the third statement is science curriculum has been prepared by considering the gender equality, the third question. And 25 female teachers are agree with this, this statement, and 34 male teachers are angry also. So we we'll look in these results, whether they are meaningful or not within the statics, especially says to us that female and male teachers' thoughts are not meaningful in the reliability of 95% in statics. This result means female and male teachers think the same thought about this statement. I see some other uh, comments. So, how should we engage science teachers that are not aware of their gender stereotypes or to participate in gender awareness trainings? Uh, thank you, Daniel Solovet. Uh, so, I can suggest to you, you can talk about the stereotypes with your colleagues in your school and in your uh, working areas. I offer to you, you can debate these stereotypes with your colleagues. For example, uh, in the scope of uh, general assemble in your uh, school, which is done, 
and also uh, then you i think uh, you understood you have understood what i mean to all of participants in this webinar and you can share with your uh, learning learning matters in here and you can share these with your colleagues tomorrow in your school it's important i think if any teacher um, release these two tasks i think they will start to read some more books or some more research in the scope of science education and it's called gender equity also, the other says we still have some time for more questions, and also I have been I have, I have been waiting for your comments, for your further questions. And uh, Basilica says, Basilica says could be a first step. Yes, exactly. Yes. Uh, also, you're most welcome, Halali, for your comments. Uh, Miriam, thank you. You're welcome, Miriam. Also, I think we have more times, uh, about five minutes. I don't know if I'm right or not. And, uh, yeah, we have. We have uh, some yeah, yeah, yeah. minutes more. If, uh, any other question? Uh, yeah. Now. Yeah. Uh, also, I see my colleagues from Turkey. So her name is Hale. Thank you very much, Hale, for your uh, comments. I think she she wants to ask about Turkish education policy. So we have some problem in the scope of science education, in the scope of gender equity. But uh, as their teacher, we can do some better things for our pupils without waiting our Ministry of National Education. So our pupils are very important for all us in this age. Uh, also, thank you very much, uh, Hale, for your comments. So, uh, Milena, I agree with Halal says, thank you, Sharon, for this presentation. Thank you, thank you, too. And Boyana says, I agree. Uh, finally, I want to say to all of you, uh, dear participants, dear science teachers, uh, yes, you're right, in the scope of uh, government policy for science education in the scope of gender equity, and as we teachers believe, and as we teachers believe, that really we have some gender inequity in our countries, we have, we have, and we should do some more things for our peoples. And after this, I think government believes our, and government believes this gender inequity, and I think after this time, they should do some solutions for our peoples. Thank you very much, Shaheen, for the uh, very interesting talk and material. Um, uh, we are about to wrap the session. If you'd like to add anything um, else, any final remark or suggestion from your side, or any final tips? Yeah, uh, also, uh, on this, uh, if, you have, if you want to have some more information, please contact with me. Uh, you will see uh, my email address, sahinidin at hotmail.com. Uh, you can ask uh, something what you want. Uh, always I can um, share my experience with you. So thank you very much for joining to this webinar. I hope uh, you, would, you would have some uh, much time in during this webinar. And hope, I think, uh, I hope this would be useful for you. Thank you very much, Shaheen. You're most welcome. It was very interesting, and I would like to thank you all for participating on behalf of European School Net, Scientix, me, and my colleague Adina. Yeah. And I hope to see you online again in one of the upcoming webinars of the Scientix series. Uh, next talk will be on 27 October, and will be about the mobile application for STEM education and how to use them in the chat. And yes. everyone is welcome to yes. join. Yes, uh, Viola, also, uh, finally, I want to say something about European School Net, that uh, I have to thank to European School Net and also Viola and Adina for their pay attention to organize this uh, webinar for science teachers around of European, uh, Europe. Uh, thank you very much. 
Thanks to you again. And You're most welcome. Thanks to everyone. And yeah, I hope to see you online for one of the upcoming live sessions. You can find, as usual, the um, information in the portal. Um, as I say, the next one will be on 27 October. Yes. So good, good evening to everyone in this webinar. Good evening to you. Thank you very much, Viola. Thanks to you, Shin.